I was always conscious of what people thought of me on court and off court. The biggest factor was that I was black. Even though I won the U.S. Open in 68, 68 was just an incredible year. Dr. King was assassinated. Our beloved brother is now in the hands of the eternal God. Then Bobby Kennedy was assassinated. And then you had the Mexico City Olympics. I would not want to go through a year like that again. Bud Collins, along with Jack Kramer, at the center of tennis in this world right now. The U.S. Open at the Westside Tennis Club in Forest Hills, New York. We've reached the last day for the championship match, and it is a historic one, as the 25-year-old Richmond, Virginia native Arthur Ashe becomes not only the first Negro player in men's tennis to compete here, but the first to reach the finals he led his 1965 UCLA college team to victory, winning both doubles and singles. Just five years ago, he was the first Negro selected for the U.S. Davis Cup team. My father was the caretaker of the largest playground for blacks in Richmond, Virginia. And four tennis courts were just 10 yards away. When I was 10 years old, the tournament director of the Black College saw me playing. From that moment on, things changed. My mother died when I was six years old. The morning my mother died, my father was holding my brother and me and saying, this is all I've got left. There was always a strong bond between my father and me. In Richmond, Virginia, in a segregated state, in a city which was the old capital of the Confederacy, where I would ride down Monument Avenue and see big statues of Jeb Stewart, Stonewall Jackson, Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, they were never my heroes. If you are black, you get used to being knocked over the head. You learn to evade certain situations or you learn to avoid them. You have to or else you wind up in jail, you'll be killed or a nervous breakdown. You have to internalize things. As a Negro growing up in Richmond, did you ever dream that you'd make it this far? As a Negro in a white man's game, how do you feel about black athletes boycotting the Olympics? You regard yourself as a militant black. One more thing, Mr. Ash. Is being a Negro a handicap in America? We call Negroes. It's not hard to tell a white man's heaven is a black man's hell. We are going to pick our heroes from today on because we want black people who are concerned with us first and with sports second. Arthur Ashe in Richmond, Virginia, 25 years old. Uh, he's worked so hard. He was a fine boy player. A good junior player, outstanding intercollegiate player, and now he's in the service, Lieutenant Arthur Ashe. 40, 40 long. Stationed at West Point, 
15 days ago, won the national amateur title in Boston. Now he's trying to win the Open. at all, I think that's fair to say, and very recently you have begun to enunciate something. What was the, what was the, the chain of your thinking? Well, uh, it, it's, it's really sort of wound up in the thought that uh, no man is an island, but in these times, 1968, it's really a mandate that you do something. You must. I do plan to take a more active interest in civil rights, trying to, to preach equality and, and harmony among the races. Kids in the, in, in the ghetto uh, uh, really need male idols to look up to. I would like to emphasize the education. We need more black lawyers, black doctors, black engineers. I'm reminded of what Pancho Gonzalez once said, that you'll never achieve true tennis greatness because of your absorption with race relations. Arthur Ashe, the first black player to win the men's Wimbledon singles title since it all started in 1877. 30,000 apartheid protesters jammed New York City streets for an end to U.S. support of the white minority ruled government. Apartheid is just morally wrong. That's all there is to it. If I think it's morally correct and it might do some good, let's give it a shot. If you let an opportunity pass when you may have been able to do some good and you didn't do it, well then you can't undo that. That's all gone.